crash! Grumble, rumble! Thunder cracked the sky and rain rattled the windows. A wolf howled. A tree crashed to the ground. It was a terrible stormy night outside. Grandpa's house creaked and groaned. Kerblam! A bolt of lightning crashed on the roof. I hopped onto Grandpa's lap. You're shaking like a cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Don't worry, there's a lightning rod on the roof. You're safe in here. Just think how terrible it would be if you were lost in the woods in a storm like this. What would you do then? I don't know, Grandpa. I think I'd just crawl under a log and die. No, you wouldn't. I know, because when I was your age, it happened to me. I was lost in a forest, but I didn't crawl under a log. I looked for a safe, dry place. I found one. An old woodcutter shack deep in the forest. The door was open, so I went inside. And that's where I found the bag of old bones. But that's a story too terrible to tell. I might scare the pants off you. Oh, please, Grandpa, please tell me this story. Very well. I don't mind if I do. There was nothing in that shack. Not a table, not a chair, not even a lamp or a candle. It was bare except for one thing. A big leather bag sat in one corner. After I dried off a bit, I took a look at the sack. I could see no marks on it, just some cracks and bulges. Open me! My hair stood on end. The voice came from inside the sack. But you know how boys are with sacks. They always want to know what's inside. So I opened it. I wish I hadn't. A fearful stench rose from the opening. I held my nose and looked inside. A grinning skull stared up at me. Thank you kindly, lad. I've been shut in this sack f for nigh unto two hundred years, and I'm dying for a breath of fresh air. <coughs> ah. Why don't you turn the sack upside down and help me put myself together? <laughs> well, I like puzzles, so I turned the sack over. Out spilled bones of all sizes and shapes. The skull cackled and sneezed. Now there's my neck bone and my shoulder bones. Just hook them together, if you please. <laughs> Now the arm bones. Oh, good. You are a smart little fellow. Now, just fasten my hands to the arm bones. Fine. Great. The arm lifted with a creak and stretched its fingers. I found all the little spine bones and fitted them together. It was a fine puzzle, and I forgot what I was doing until the feet were fitted to the ankle bones. With a fearsome shriek, those bones jumped up and pranced around the shack. It was horrible. I had never seen a skeleton before, especially one that moved. Now we'll have dinner. <laughs> and the dinner is you. I'm going to eat you up. <laughs> he grabbed me by the coat, but I slipped out of it. I ran from the shack so fast I tore the door off its hinges. I ran through the forest, bumping into trees and falling over rocks. Behind I could hear the clickety-clack of running bones. Just in time I saw a tiny cave in the hillside. I dove in and covered the door with a big rock. Phew! I was just in time. Outside I could hear the skeleton clawing at the rock. I thought I was lucky to be safe in that cave, but I wasn't. I was in worse trouble than ever. I had stumbled into the cave of the Warty Witch. But that's another story. Too terrible to tell. Please tell me, Grandpa. Very well. I don't mind if I do. And I will if you will just turn the page.